What is up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of this Hue Forge kind of beginner tutorial. This is episode, I think it's four in our series. Thank you guys so much for being engaged and tuned in this far into the series. And I hope this episode today is going to help give you guys all the tools that you need to really get your hands dirty with Hue Forge. Now, we have covered a lot of stuff up to this point from installing the software to getting your first image loaded in, what the different modes do, what settings you need to have set. I mean, we've talked about a ton. And then on our last episode, we actually dove into standard mode and understood why Hue Forge is making the decisions that it's making. Now, today we are going to be talking about a couple of the more niche settings inside of Hue Forge, what they do, what are their use cases, and when should you use them? So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay. So we are inside of Hue Forge. You see, I have this image of an astronaut guy. He is hanging out here in space or on the moon or somewhere, and he's looking at the moon, I guess. And so this is our image. Now, for this episode, I want to cover a couple of the settings that you see around our software. So far, I've been very particular and said, don't edit the settings, leave them here. Don't change them. I'll tell you when you need to change them. This is that episode where I kind of tell you when and where you should change them. These settings will change the way your image prints and the way your image looks depending on what you do. And their use cases are, are different. And so I'm gonna show you a couple different use cases, but it's really going to take you hopping into the software, practicing these settings for yourself and seeing when you need to use them for what image. All right. So for this image here, we see that we have all of our settings kind of set normally, right? We have our, we don't have a border set. Filament painting is turned on. Mesh mode is standard. Depth is static depth. Don't change that quite yet. We have detail size 0.2, layer height 0.08, base layer 0.16, base thickness 0.48, blend depth 1.76, and then we have the actual dimensions of the image, okay? If your settings are different, go ahead, hit restore defaults, and get them to where mine are, all right? So first, we are going to look down at the bottom, and we are going to look specifically at base thickness and blend depth. Now, both of these things accomplish two different use cases. Sometimes you'll use them both, and sometimes you will use them uh, separately. And so base thickness is exactly what it sounds like. It is going to increase the base layers of your Hue Forge. Now, this is really, really important because on an image like this, you see that we have this like black that's kind of just exposed here. There's there's no real layering happening on top of it. And if you look at the original image here, if I move it out of my view for y'all, y'all can see that, yeah, it's just kind of glowing up here. We're not going to get a lot of blending and if you guys have printed Hue Forges before, you know that that layer itself is going to be really, really thin because there's nothing that's layered on top of it. We want to fix this by increasing our base thickness. If we increase our base thickness, it is going to do exactly what it says. It is going to make the base thicker. So the base color here being black, we are going to increase the base thickness. And I'm gonna kind of zoom in here so y'all can see what this will accomplish for us. Our base thickness is at 0.48. We are going to up it by, let's let's do something pretty drastic so you see it. We're gonna up it to a base thickness of 1.0. And I need you guys to look at everything that's going to be changing on the screen. Enter. Okay, we saw several things happen, right? If I control Z, we go back 0.48. And then we up it to one. We saw lots of things happen. For starters, our base layer here went up. The black is now ending at 17 layers. If I end it, now it's at 11, okay? So when we increase the base thickness, this is increasing, and now we're at like layer 18. We have 18 layers of black, and you can see that this piece right here is significantly thicker, okay? See, thinner, thicker, all right? You can see that that got incredibly thicker. So now that top piece of this bookmark is not going to be nearly as flimsy. It's going to be a lot, a lot thicker. And you can also see that the mesh height has gone up a lot. 
I believe it was at 2.24. And when we increase the base thickness to 1.04, it goes up to 2.8. Now we have to understand what this will do to our image because this will change things quite a bit. Our image is a lot darker, right? Than what it was before. If we come back, the image is pretty bright here. All right, this is because we are adding more black to the image. And so we're doing this. This is getting really, really dark here. And we need to adjust the image to match. So we either bring this down in order to kind of match this up a little bit. We can play around with our sliders and kind of get something that we like. But we have to understand that this base thickness is going to create more of that base color, which means that it will come through more, especially if you have it higher up on your mesh core or your color core. So sometimes then we will need to add layers because we have less layers here to kind of play with. We have 35, but our black is taking up so many. And if we bring this down some, it's not going to look nearly as good. So if we're going to keep, let's say, our black at layer 18, we want to have more layers to play around with our image for. And so now we're going to play with our blend depth. Now, blend depth is going to add a layer for each one you increase. So if I click this little arrow, I'm going to add a layer. Now I have 36 layers. If I click it again, now I have 37 layers. And if I increase it significantly, let's say by 2.5, now I have a lot. I have 44 layers now. I believe before I had maybe 32 or 37. And so now I can bring my, my purple and my pinks up. We have much brighter highlights. I can bring my black up a little bit. And now we're getting some more blending, especially here on the moon that we weren't getting before. Now, when we increased our blend depth, we also have to realize that our mesh height also increased. It was at like 2.8, now it's at 3.5. This is because we are adding height to the Hue Forge. This means you are going to be getting a thicker bookmark or a thicker poster when you do this. And sometimes that's great. It's the effect that you want. But sometimes you don't want the thicker posters and you don't want the thicker bookmarks. And so you really need to be kind of aware of the, you know, if you're adding a ton of height to your bookmark, it will increase your print time, it will increase your material cost, and it will um, maybe not fit into like a display that you have set aside for it or something like that. So you need to be very, very aware of your mesh height so that you don't ruin something unintentionally. These are going to be two of the niche settings that you play around with more. These are going to be two things that I would encourage you to frequent because this, if you've ever been frustrated about not being able to get a gradient, you need to play around with your blend depth because that will significantly increase the amount of layers that you have to play with. You will edit your base thickness and your blend depth a lot. So get used to those settings, get used to playing around with them because they are essential for you understanding the kind of core components of Hueforge. Now, there's one other thing that I really wanted to kind of focus on with you, and that was our layer height. Now, our layer height is something that you set in the slicer. And we're going to do the next video is going to be a whole video on slicing Hue Forges and making sure that they're good to go, so that they print well on your 3D printer. But your layer height is a, a setting that you will set in your slicer. And a good rule of thumb is if you are printing with a 0.4 nozzle, you can typically go up to a layer height of 0.08. But if you're printing with a 0.2 nozzle, you can go up to a layer height of 0.04. Now, this is crucial because if you have a 0.2 nozzle and you print at a layer height of 0.04, look at how many layers this gives me. If I edit this down to 0.04, I now have 86 layers that I can play around with and I can make much more fine tuned kind of edits here. And I have so much room to play around with blending. This blending just wasn't possible before. If I change this back, look at this kind of like pixelating kind of effects that we're getting here in the moon. But if I bring this down to a 0.04, now we're getting a much cleaner blend of colors from the indigo to the magenta. Now, if you print with a 0.2 nozzle, a couple things you need to know. One, it will double, in some cases, triple your print time. If you've printed with a 0.2 nozzle before, you know that it, those layers are so, so thin, 
which means that you are going to increase your print time significantly. If you are a market person or you sell your prints and, and you are looking to make the most amount of profit for your prints, I would not recommend printing with a 0.2 nozzle unless the print absolutely demands it because it will take absolutely forever. But if you're printing for detail or you're printing like a small hue forge and you want a lot of intricate details, maybe a 0.2 nozzle is the route to go because you can print at a layer height of 0 0.04 and you can get some incredible blending. And then you don't need to even edit your blend depth. You can bring it back down to the 1.76 default because now we have 68 layers to play with. And even at the 0.2 um, nozzle, or even with a point, yeah, a point two nozzle, we don't have to increase the height of our mesh core at all. And so those are a couple things for you to keep in mind. Let me summarize everything we've talked about so far so that I make sure that you guys are caught up for the next episode, because these settings, especially as we're editing some slicer details in Hueforge, are going to become very important once we're actually in the slicer about to print. Your blend depth and base thickness are things that you're going to use a lot. Blend depth is going to edit the amount of layers that you have to edit with, and it's going to increase the height of your hue forge. Your base thickness is going to increase the base of your hue forge. Typically, it's this bottom most color here on your color core. That is going to increase the thickness. It is going to cause your hue forge to get taller, but you are not going to gain layers for you to edit with. In fact, sometimes it will mean that your base layer can overtake some of the colors that are stepping on top of it. And so you need to be aware of that. Both of them increase your mesh core height. Your hue forge will get taller if you bring them up and your hue forge will get thinner if you bring them down. Last but not least, I would recommend printing with a 0.4 nozzle, but if you're printing with a 0.2 nozzle, make sure you edit your layer height to that 0.04 so that you get the more layers to edit with and play around with because you will get better blending with a 0.2 nozzle at a 0.04 layer height. That is all this video was on. I'm sorry. I know that you may have wanted more, but I need you guys to get into Hueforge and actually play around with these three settings because we're, we're slowly layering on top of one another, right? We learned how to install the program, how to import an image, how to get a basic edit, why standard mode is making the decisions that it's making. And now we're able to start editing some of the more niche kind of features in Hueforge so that we get the results that we're looking for. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. I need to give a huge shout out to my Patreon family. Y'all are killing it. I've hit some pretty tough times recently. And so you guys have been incredible. You guys are one of the reasons why I can sit down and make these videos. And so thank you so much. If you haven't checked out the Patreon, please consider it. It helps me out a ton. It helps me do this for free on YouTube, but you also get one-on-one -on -one Hugh Forge coaching in my Patreon, which is just something that I know as I was learning would be super helpful. And I try to keep it as competitive of a price as possible so that you guys get the absolute most value out of it. So shout out to all of my current patrons. You guys are awesome. And if you're interested in getting some one-on-one -on -one coaching, check it out. It supports me and you get to learn Hugh Forge at a little bit of a faster pace. Thank you all for tuning in to today's video. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a wonderful day whenever this video catches you. And I will catch you guys in the next one. If you're still here and you have some specific questions about Hueforge, leave them down in the or in the comments below because I will be able to address them in that last video. We're going to attack some commonly asked questions from you guys. And so make sure to let me know what those are down in the comments below. Leave a like and I'll catch y'all in the next one.